Hey, Glenn here. I've got a new toy at Monster Guitars. I think you may have seen it hinted at when it was still either boxed up or not yet set up, but now you're going to see it revealed in all of its glory. My new combination planer jointer. It's really nice. So there it is. This is a um, 12 inch wide combination jointer and planer. It's common enough to have planers that are that wide and wider. That's that's pretty standard. But having a jointer that wide is pretty substantial. That's That was really the, the appeal in this machine for me. That and the fact that it's got a spiral cutting head. I bought it from a, a company in New Zealand called Macma. I'll put the address on the screen. Quite happy to endorse them. I've always had good experiences working with with Peter at Magma and the machines they sell are very decent. I have high hopes for this. They don't sell like big recognizable brand names, but I'm pretty sure a lot of this stuff is, is made in the same factory as, as more expensive machines and it just doesn't have the branding on it. Um, yeah, it looks like a really quality piece of kit. Uh, all the work surfaces at the moment are covered with, it's kind of like wax paper, but but not quite and all the surfaces are greased or oiled for for protection so i'll have to clean all those up let's get into this so i'm quite pleased with the way that this is set up i'm doing what's called making sure that the infield infield infeed table and outfeed table of the jointer are coplanar that is basically parallel with each other on the same level you know not not at different angles because you don't want that that would make for terrible jointing they are set up coplanar at the factory but in transit it's quite possible that these things will be jostled and bumped out of being coplanar and so the way that you check is you have a straight edge or something very much like a straight edge i'm i'm treating this as good enough close enough to being a straight edge for this purpose and I've adjusted the infeed table up using that lever which is what it's for so that these two tables are level with each other my straight edge runs directly from one onto the other and there is absolutely no rocking and then in theory if everything is coplanar when you move the straight edge to the far side that should still be the case. There should be no rocking there. And you know what? There isn't anything. It's, it is perfect, which is quite possible because, you know, it is set up perfect, but you just have to be ready for it to not be perfect when you get it. But if it is, then great. I should probably clean that gunk up before I start using this. Well, the manual was evidently clear enough for me to get this thing fully assembled with the fence, nice solid fence it has, and the guard. It has the European style sliding guard as opposed to the American one. I really think this one is better than the American one. It is just, it's safer the, the, um, when used correctly. And I didn't really know how to use these things correctly when I first got my small jointer ages ago. When used correctly, you, you never expose the teeth on this thing i say teeth because it doesn't have standard blades it's got the helical cutter head whereas the american one and i can't really show you one because i don't have one it swings out of the way as you put the wood through and for a brief moment part of the cutter is exposed uh, only a brief moment but it's um, a little bit less safe than what i have here um, yeah, so I can't actually demonstrate this machine yet. I need to get some electrical work done. This workshop needs 20 amps, and at the moment I've only got the standard 10. So I've just had an electrician in to wire in an outlet that will handle this. It has a 15 amp plug on it. There's the outlet there. I've got it on wheels, so um, it's convenient. I store it kind of over there out of the way. My dust extraction unit, somewhat primitive but effective, um, is also on wheels. So I'll just wheel these things out together to kind of the middle of the room where they are now. And there I will 
use them. So the first piece of work that I want to do with this is to oh, the, under all that there are some poplar boards that I'm going to use to make a barn door for my timber storage shed and I want to joint and plane those to make them all nice a process that people sometimes summarize by saying I'm going to machine those boards down and that's basically what that means I have a guest so I'm going to try that first of all what I've done is I've used my adjuster here for the infeed table and I've, there's no precise measurement there's no gauge to to tell you exactly how much is that what that's meant to be I don't know I wouldn't rely on the numbers anyway what I've done is I've just used a ruler and I'll show you what I've done there we are that looks about right looks like it's just under a millimeter so that should be fine now I'm coming to see more and more that dust is the enemy in in a woodwork shop so I'm going to be quite vigilant whenever I'm using a machine whether it's a large one like this or my smaller spindle sander especially sanders because that dust gets everywhere you know including the air and, and into your lungs uh, I'm going to be using dust extraction it doesn't fit though so I'm going to tape this up for now but I'll have to get some connectors that will go over this which I think is a hundred millimeters so it'll have to be slightly larger than that I'll take a sample into a, a store and get some pieces but in the meantime it's going to be duct tape <laughs> So that is very nice and smooth. Good. My technique is going to continue to need work. Um, stopping and starting as I as I slide it through. But um, oh, and, and part part of that was caused by the fact that I didn't lock the wheels. Well, lock the movement which I can do down there and so it moved a couple of times while I was doing this and I realized oh that's not really that's not really ideal so I can I can fix that but that's great so there we have one flat jointed face now because the fence is at 90 degrees I measured this earlier I can now use that face to joint the edge which will now be a nice right angle
Okay. Now the only thing remaining is to switch this over to planar mode, also known as a thicknesser, and put it through with that face up to make that face number one nice and flat and smooth and number two parallel to the face that I've just joined it. mistake even though I think there's probably a switch here that stops the motor from running when the lid is lifted you should still unplug it just to be careful okay so it's got some kind of spring mechanism which is stopping it from just falling down, which is good. It's, it's locked into place there. <clears throat> and then I switch this hood over. I'll leave the dust extractor connected. Okay, and that's really simple. That is really simple. There's one lever for me to pull on the other side just to engage the rollers to pull things through the thicknesser. And so now I'll raise this table up because obviously that's really huge at the moment. I'll just check that you can see what I can see. Oh yeah, that's fine. A little bit off center, but that's not so bad. Obviously nothing is that thick. Well, some things are, but nothing I would be using. Now, in jointer mode, I push the boards through that way, but because they're being cut by the same spinning block, with thicknesser mode, I have to push them through the opposite way. Let's see how we go. Right, I'll stop the demonstration there. I'll just bring you around this side so you can see there's a little bit of sawdust that has come out of the mouth opening of the 
thicknesser slash planer. That's normal, but that's really not very much. Obviously, the dust extraction is working okay. Um, the reason you saw me stop a few times there is just that I was encountering a bit of resistance as I put the board through. So rather than push really hard and try and make it go through, I just did a bit of looking to see what was causing that. And I think what was happening there is that I was trying to take off too much. And so the, the wheels, the rollers were saying, hey, watch it there, buddy. But let's look at the results. This is really good. Very good indeed. You can see there some slight low spots. So I'll put this through a couple more times. Or I'll do some measuring and decide if I can just cut the end of the board off. And I don't need that. There's another low spot there. But this is really smooth. Very, very nice. And uh, with, the, with the helical cutter head, those blades will last a very long time as well. So I'm very pleased with this, with this purchase. It was a significant purchase, my most expensive tool yet. Um, now I'm going to go through all of those, all of these popular boards. Well, I'll, I'll plan out my door first of all, and then I'll go through all of the boards that I need. And I won't, yeah, I won't do them one at a time like this. What I'll do is I'll joint all of the faces and then I'll joint all of the edges and then I'll put them all through the planer slightly more streamlined way of doing it but there we are um i've been thinking of a name for this guy i don't know maybe eric for some reason i keep going to eric maybe it's eric idol inspiring me i am a monty python fan but any in, 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 <laughs> in any case um, that's my new toy and I'm going to be using it for many projects, including most of my guitar builds, because I use recycled beams, and so this will really machine them into usable blanks in no time. So, stick around and watch me using this in many more projects to come here on Monster Guitars.